wasn't restricted just to Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid. It reached even into the Western Hemisphere. Zero point one five nine one five four nine is less than zero, an inverted quantity. The unknown Teotihuacanos of Mexico honored this inverted constant by dedicating a pyramid to it. An inverted pyramid dug down below ground level. Here you are standing right in the middle of it. At matrix vector 9.1189065. The Quetzalcoatl complex is big. If you'd like to take a hike around it, be sure to bring a lunch. It has a perimeter of a mile. The largest inverted prehistoric monument ever found. 0 0.1591549 by the radian. 9.1189065. That's inverted, of course. On the plus side, multiply it by double pi and get the radian again. Quetzalcoatl's inverted center is 765 feet wide. They could have built the Great Pyramid within its depression. But what about Stonehenge, where this new constant was taught? Try it against the 48.669 foot radius of Stonehenge and find the square root of 60. Now we know why they encoded the square roots here. When the Arabs defaced the Great Pyramid they forgot one of the stones. When we found it, it was promptly shipped off to England, where its sloped surface was subjected to some of the finest instruments we have. Its slope angle was found to be 51 degrees, 51 minutes, 14.305 seconds. The findings were distributed around the world in the hope that someone, anyone, could find a reason for this curious angle. To date, no one has any answers, except their own. It's the price we pay for believing that the builders were ignorant. 51 degrees, 51 minutes, and 14.305 seconds can also be expressed as 51.8539736 degrees. In this, its decimal mode, it has a tangent. And this tangent is a mathematical ratio. That which separates the cube of pi from the square of double pi. Watch out for their tangents. They made dandy hiding places for information. Anyway, that gives us another pie aspect in the Great Pyramid. Now let's climb up to its apex. Which is no longer intact today. The destroyers got that too. And of course, we have yet to find its capstone, which, really, we don't need. Now having its original proportions, we can make it ourselves. It requires only that we be careful to give it the same slope angle as found in the base facing stone, the reciprocal of which, when calculated from the perpendicular, is exactly 38.1460263 degrees. the tangent of which is 0 0.78539817.5 which when then multiplied by the four sides of this pyramid well is there anyone who doesn't know what that is and right off the very top of the monument
Okay, let's see what we have so far. Pi off its apex. Double pi is the ratio between its height and base perimeter. A three-dimensional model of double pi which was built on a squared base. That's double pi squared. The tangent of its slope angle hides the ratio between the cube of pi and the square of double pi. And of course the reciprocal of double pi. We missed anything? This pyramid is pi from the ground up. Okay, we have its makeup and its longitude. Next comes its latitude. A pyramid which marks the location of a prime meridian running north and south from pole to pole should likewise address latitude, should it not? It is logical. And all latitude is reckoned from the equator, which as it circumscribes the earth has a length. The equatorial circumference of the earth 24,901.54558 statute miles. Twenty-four thousand nine hundred one point five four five five eight has a tangent to one point eight four five two seven zero one four nine. Again, only the mathematician can recognize it for what it is: the cube root of double pi. Double pi. Does the tangent of the Earth's equatorial circumference have something to do with the double pi Great Pyramid? We have only to ask. Visualize the Great Pyramid in your mind. Four sides, four base corners, and an apex. Nine features. Raise this tangent, this cube root, to its ninth power, and we find the cube of double pi. Of course, all that does is prove the cube of double pi. If it has anything to offer to the matrix, we must test it against something that is in the matrix, like the Great Pyramid, since we did employ its nine features. The Great Pyramid's longitude was 360 degrees. What might 360 have to say to the cube of double pi? It yields this figure, which encodes the parallel of latitude, which runs right across the north face of the Great Pyramid. At this point on the pyramid, then, the matrix holds a vector at the cube of double pi. Why doesn't this parallel cross the actual apex? It wasn't supposed to. That point was reserved for something else, a link with astronomy. Are we ready to admit that they knew astronomy? I am, and the most elementary constant in astronomy, or even in its predecessor, astrology, is the 25,920-year procession of the equinoxes. The equation appears long, but is actually quite simple. Divide the precession of the equinoxes by the Earth's equatorial circumference. Then divide that figure into the grid latitude on the north face of the Great Pyramid. This yields the figure which encodes the actual apex latitude of the Great Pyramid. 29 degrees, 58 minutes, 51.00 seconds north, dead center on the apex. Linked between astronomy and terrestrial geodetics. The apex latitude of the Great Pyramid is special, having little to do with the global pyramid matrix. The matrix vector in the north face was reserved for those probes.